I'd like to do a short video about an issue of unit conversion that comes up with intervals, uh, and specifically intervals of temperature and intervals of pressure. So this is a very simple topic, but sometimes we get a little confused and it's good to just address um, these topics straight on. So the question is related to intervals and we'll start with temperature intervals. And so temperature intervals come into our engineering calculations, for instance, with sensible heat, the amount of heat that it takes to raise the mass, the temperature of a mass that has, of a material that has a heat capacity CP is uh, MCP delta T, where delta T is a temperature interval of the out temperature minus the in. So T out minus T in. So if we had, for instance, uh, this delta T, if it were uh, that T out is, let's say, 35 degrees C, and T in is 20 degrees C, we could subtract the two and get 15 degrees C. What if I needed to know that in Kelvin? So Kelvin is absolute temperature and Celsius is not, it is relative to zero of um, the freezing point of water. Um, and sometimes again on an exam when we're a little bit rushed, we might think, oh, I know how to convert uh, Celsius to Kelvin, I just add 273.16. But we don't need to add 273.16. And we can see that that's the case um, if we would first convert T out and T in. So if I converted T out to Kelvin, I would have 35 plus 273.16. If I convert to 20, I would get 20 plus 273.16, and those would be in Kelvin. So now we're subtracting these two sets, and there's a 273.16 there, and there's one here behind the minus sign. So these cancel, and we get 35 minus 20, uh, Kelvin intervals, and we still get 15 Kelvin as an interval. There was a time that they would write degrees uh, Celsius degrees instead of degrees Celsius to indicate the interval, but that's fallen out of fashion. So we just have to remember that when we're talking about intervals, uh, we don't convert the Celsius and the Kelvin. They have the same interval size and Fahrenheit and ranking have the same interval size. And so we don't, we can just switch the Celsius to the Kelvin. Now, if we need, like in the ideal gas law, if we need a temperature that's uh, an absolute temperature with respect to absolute zero, we, abs we absolutely uh, need to convert the units. This is only an issue of intervals. There's an interval issue also with pressure. So let's talk now about pressure intervals and it comes out the same way. Um, so for instance, if we have a, a pressure change in a flowing fluid, the pressure drop delta P might be P2 minus P1. Um, and if the pressure at position two is um, 100 PSI on a gauge, and the pressure at P2 is 80 PSI measured on a gauge, then we could subtract the two and get that there is 20 PSI difference between those two points in a flow, for instance. Now notice I'm not calling it PSI gauge anymore, and that's because it no longer matters that it's a gauge pressure because I've already subtracted two numbers. And the issue of the gauge um, has to do with gauge pressure being measured relative to one atmosphere pressure compared to absolute pressure measured with respect to absolutely zero pressure or vacuum. So if I wanted to know P2, if P2 is 100 PSI gauge, and I wanted it in PSI atmosphere, uh, absolute, I have to add one atmosphere 
So one atmosphere in PSI is 14.696. So it's 100 plus 14.696. Those are both um, PSI numbers, but then at the end of the day, I'm getting the value of pressure at a single point. So this will be PSI absolute. So 114.696 PSI absolute is 100 PSIG. Now I've kept all the sig figs and that's not really correct, but let's think of this as some sort of intermediate calculation. If I did the same for P1, I would have 80 PSIG. And if I wrote that as PSIA, it would be again 80 plus 14.696 PSIA. Um, so that's 94, 696 PSIA. If I calculated the pressure interval delta P from the PSIA numbers, you can see that, that the 14.696 business is going to cancel out. So P2 minus P1 equals P2, which is, um, let me do it as 100 plus 14.696 PSIA minus P1, which is 80 minus 14.696 plus um, 14.696 PSIA. So here's a 14.696 and here's one behind the minus sign. So these two cancel. We get 100 minus 80 and again we get 20 PSI. So these values are PSIA, PSIA individually, but we still get for the interval delta P the 20 PSI no matter how we, no matter how we do it. So the mistake I occasionally see, again, when people are a little bit confused or rushed for time, is they'll say, oh, PSI, I have to convert to PSI A or something. And we start adding 14.696 to an interval, and that is not correct. 